Hey everybody, welcome to the Chris Gunther Show. Thank you guys so much for watching. Two things, like and share this video. Your support thus far has been amazing. I greatly appreciate you. On today, I am extremely honored to be sitting beside the president of this wonderful school here, Academy of Urban Scholars, Miss Sabrina Jones. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Chris? Good. First of all, thank you for just taking this time out with me to chop it up. Greatly appreciate it. Love what you have on, and I hate what I have on. <laughs> I know I've said it so many times already, but that is a really nice attire that you definitely have. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Anyway, so first of all, take me back through you know your journey. Like, How did you become the principal here at Academy of Urban Scholars? Well, I started off as the intervention specialist here at the school in May of 2014. Yes. Um, and then as the school progressed and we became more of a traditional high school, um, I worked with the founder who is Mr. John Gregory and everything and he groomed me and talked to me about becoming the director of the um, of the school yes. and in December of 2015 I became the director of the school. So in 2015 you became the director of the school. What was that like for you? It was a transition. Um, he took me out of my comfort zone initially. I was okay with just being the intervention specialist, <laughs> but of course he saw a leader in myself. And then, um, like I said, he just started grooming me and everything, and um, I became the director. But since then, it's been amazing. I have an amazing team. Yes. Um, it's a team of 17 of us, and we're really close. Um, we call this family. We call this home. We make sure our students make sure they feel like it's home as well. And I love it. Yeah. So what is it like for you when you walk the halls and you see the students learning and you see them becoming not just better students, but better people? It's an it's a wow moment. You know, um, when I started off um, in the education field, I started off teaching in Cleveland and everything. And, you know, I remember my first class and in all of that but then um as time went on i went to different school you know two different schools and then i ended up here and ended up in the director's position so when i see the students actually learning and the innovation inside the classroom i have wonderful teachers that are so creative in the classroom that yes. they think outside the box and everything that's one thing our founder is real big on is us thinking outside the box and figuring out ways to capture the students attention and all of that so to see it actually happen in the classroom and see the students focused and amazed and you know they're motivated to learn I mean it's just an awesome feeling you mentioned just now outside of the box what are some of the out of the box methods that you guys do here at Academy of Urban Scholars so we do project-based learning um, activities inside the classroom we have one teacher that's doing a podcast inside of his class the English classroom we have the um, science teacher who does a lot of hands-on activities within the science classroom yes. he actually has two three pets he has a lizard a snake and um, a guinea pig inside the classroom. Inside so, the classroom. Inside the classroom now, every day. I know day. times have definitely changed. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, you couldn't even bring a cell phone in class, let alone a pet. Yeah, so he brings, you know, he brings the pets and he, you know, relates science and all that to the lifespans of the pets and everything like that. And the students absolutely love it. Yeah, I mean, that's because it's something, just like you said, it's out of the box, it's not traditional, it's kind of like a hands-on type of thing. And you had mentioned too, a teacher does an actual podcast. A teacher does as a part we so we have our English teacher who is Mr. McCartney um, he's actually amazing he's been with us for three years now started off um, as an assistant English teacher and then he just progressed into the English in, uh, I'll say a uh, um, lead teacher yes. in the English role and then he um, he has a podcast with the students they write you know they write the podcast they talk about it and everything like that he has a film club he also does our anime club as well too when I was in high school I heard of theater club I've heard of all sports but I've never heard of anime club so you gotta hit on that with me cuz I, I'm going to put this out there. I am not a fan of anime. <laughs> I'm not. It puts me to sleep. I ain't into it. But I know the rest of you guys are probably going to shun me for that. Oh, well. But for those that love anime and are in the anime club, can you hit on that? Okay. So the anime club, I'm not familiar with the anime club, but the students absolutely love it. Um, I want to say it was the mid-January. They actually took about 12 of our students to an anime convention yes. that was in Cleveland. My fiance would have loved that. 
family, uh, they absolutely <laughs> loved it. Um, another one of our teachers made them t-shirts. We have a cricket here. Everybody knows what the cricket is <laughs> and all of that. So we have a teacher who loves the cricket, Miss Waldorf, and she made the students and the staff shirts for them to go to the anime convention. But we're student driven. Yes. So the student drives the activities, just like what you said. When we were in school, it was your traditional activities that every school had. Yeah. So what we do a lot of times is we survey the students and we ask them, what clubs would you like? And then when we do that, we start looking at what teachers would be able to facilitate those clubs. And a lot of our teachers have the same interest yeah. as some of the students. So it just works out perfectly. I love how you had put in there, it just works out perfectly because you and your staff decided, let's make a survey and ask the students, what do you want to see? How important is it that you as an educator actually listen to your students? Oh, it, it, I mean, I wouldn't be here today if I didn't listen to my students. Yes. The students, like I said, the students is what drives our extracurricular activities. The students is what drives um, the curriculum somewhat in the classroom, what the students do in the classroom and all of that. It's very important to listen to the students because ultimately in the end, they're the ones that have to do the work. Yeah. You know, so we really are working ourselves to more of a facilitation approach than just a teacher-student approach. Yes. And when I say that, it's where the students are driving the learning in the classroom. The teachers plant the seed, but then the students are the ones who actually nurture it, feed it, and tell us yes. what it looks like. I love how you put, they have to basically, like how you guys plant the seed, and you guys are the, just the ones to just plant it, you know, just to show them that you can do so much. So you being somebody that is obviously a Youngstown native and you know, you've know you pretty much grown up here, you've seen so many people come and go, what mm -hmm. made you decide to stay here and even want to become a teacher? Because many of these students are me. Wow. You know, um, I remember I grew up, um, when I grew up and went to high school, I went over to Cheney High School and um, you know, we were there and I enjoyed my experience in high school, so I wanna make sure that all my students have that experience that I had in high school as well. And as you know, I have two boys, um, Quincy and Quavon. Both of my boys, neither one of them went to the same high school. Right. You know, so Quincy went to Mooney. Quincy went to Mooney. Which we never lost to y'all, by the way. But okay. like well, you were saying, <laughs> y'all know I had to yeah, throw it in you there. Had to I throw had to throw that in no there. Choice. Quincy gonna get you. It's so, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so Quincy went to Mooney and Quavon went to Valley Christian. Yes. But with the both of them, I had to find the school that matched them. Yeah. You know, and so that's the thing about Academy for Urban Scholars. You know, we're just another kind of high school. Correct. You know, and so with Quincy and Quavon, they both have different personalities. They had different needs. Yeah. And with those needs, you know, thanks to ODE, I had the ability to choose what school they went to. Correct. You know, and so that's what I like to provide for our families in the Youngstown area is you're not subjected to one school. There's many schools out here that's wonderful. Yes. You know, and you have to choose the best school for you. We call our school the melting pot. Wow. You know, we have a little bit of everybody here. And the funny part about it is, <laughs> and we talk about it all the time, when we get our students in here, every student finds someone to be friend. I love it. And that's what I love. I love to go in the lunchroom and see that student that you may have saw in another school where it was larger or whatever. That student might have been sitting by themselves or whatever. But when they come here, they find someone that's alike. Yeah. Because most of the time, if you are coming to another school, you know, you're a little shy at first, mm -hmm. and then it takes somebody to just come up and break the ice and see what can happen. Mm -hmm. And that's incredible. Now here, you guys also have mentoring programs as well. Yes, we do. We have the Men of Standards and we have the Women of Standards. The Men of Standards is led by Mr. Allen Underwood and the Women of Standards is led by Tiasia Sims. Yes. And they do a wonderful job with outreach in the community, trying to get individuals to come in and mentor our students, as well as they work on our students' post-secondary um, endeavors. So um, last week they went to Kent State, um, the week before that, they 
they went to Eastern Gateway. We have a couple trips where they're going to go to Wilberforce and Central State. And so they just provide the opportunity for our students to be exposed to different career paths. And then we also have speakers that come in the building and talk to our students about various um, job careers as far as IT is concerned, um, nursing and all of that. Yes. So, you know, it's really exposing our students to just various careers, various trades that's out there and all of that. I remember when we were in junior high, T.A. She was one of the smartest people. She was one of the smartest people in the entire school. So for you to even have her out here, I know that is nothing but a blessing to you. I was going to say it's a blessing. Yes, oh, T.A. Yeah. is very bright. She's a you know wonderful young lady and everything. She's able to connect with the students, she you is. know, um, and she's able to bring wonderful ideas to me. We're always brainstorming on ideas on how to take it a step further. Actually, Tiasia and Miss Noble now has a um, girl circle wow. that they do with our students every second block, do with a group of girls every second block. And they just talk to the girls about self-worth, self, self-awareness self and all of that. So it, it's amazing. Absolutely. And I remember, I believe it was this past summer, she had did a poem at the African-American uh, Wellness Walk downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everybody was loving it then she goes on social media everybody was resharing it I was mm -hmm. definitely somebody that reshared it for you but <laughs> you know it's great just to see that you have an incredible people like you have an incredible staff here and you're an incredible leader how do you stay motivated to continue to lead this next generation I stay motivated. The students motivate me. Yes. You know, every graduation or every day, there's there's something that happens that is is an aha moment for me. There's something that happens that is it, it sets a milestone for me. I'm learning. Yes. I'm learning with the students and I tell them all the time, we're in this together. We're learning. Nobody has the the magic wand on how all this is supposed to happen. So, again, like I said, I take information from them. They take in from, from information from me and it's a shared approach. Yes. You know, that's how we do this. You mentioned the African American Wellness Walk. The individual, Mr. John Gregory and his wife, Miss Pamela Gregory, they're actually the ones who started the African American Wellness Walk wow. in Columbus and they're the ones who started the school. Yeah. So I had that's no the idea. Yeah, I'm that, seeing, she's teaching me stuff. <laughs> So that's the connection. So we also have an Academy for Urban Scholars in Columbus. They've been open for eight years now. Yes. Mr. Gregory, Mr. Gregory is a native from the Youngstown area. So once he did it in Columbus for two years, he saw the need for it here in Youngstown. I don't know if people is aware of this, but there's actually 10,000 individuals in the Youngstown area who wow. does not have a high school diploma. 10,000. Now that is a yeah. sad statistic, but it's also interesting. It's real. It's real. So along with our traditional high school that we service students in the traditional way from, you know, ages 14 to 21, we also have a 22 plus program yes. where we're able to provide, um, we're piloting, we're able to provide an education and an actual high school diploma once they finish for individuals over the age of 22. And wow. that's 22 up. So um, we, you know, we talked about it throughout the summer. We got a lot of interest and in everything. And I was amazed that we had actually 100 people sign up, 100 yes. plus people sign up for the 22 plus program. Yes. So it's, it's, it's real. It's real out oh, there. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, something that I have picked up on because, of course, you know, I'm from here as mm -hmm. well, born and raised. You practically babysitting when mm -hmm. I was a kid. <laughs> One of the things that I picked up on was you are a strong advocate of education to yes. even see you in this position, to even see you wanting to give back and doing such a phenomenal job of it. But I'll even go ahead and throw this out there. I'm just glad that it's another black principal in the city, mm -hmm. which is a predominantly white city and bunch. Of, and I'm not throwing shade on any other race, but it's great to see one of us in the office. It's great to see one of us who's the leader, who's mm -hmm. the one who is pretty much spearheading everything. So you as an African-American woman, and mm -hmm. this is you know National Women's Month, how proud does that make you? And do you ever pat yourself on the back and say, I'm actually doing the thing that I said I was always gonna do? Probably not, because people talk about- Well, you're gonna do it now. Here you go. <laughs> wow, there you go. Probably, you know what, we just do the work. <laughs> You yeah. know, our staff, we just get up and we grind every single day for our students. We just do the work. We go to bed at night and we get up and we do it again. Yeah. And that's that's just it. Women yeah. are strong. I don't know how y'all do have the stuff y'all do. I, I personally don't think I can handle it. <laughs> 
you could. Nah, you could. man. Think you, about, you uh, could. Nah, okay, maybe. But. <laughs> you could. And, you know, and I tell students everything. Who you see before you and is not the same person I typically was in high school. I mean, I was a good kid in high school. You know, I got good grades and all of that kind of stuff. But we yeah. all have gone through stuff. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. And I said, what you guys are looking at is somebody who's gone through it. Yes. This is what it looks like on the other side. You know, we're very transparent with our students about ourselves and everything. One big thing about us at AUSY is we love relationships. Yes. We have positive relationships with our students. You know, we pick our students up for school. We drop our students off. You know, just the other day, I picked a student up. I took her child to daycare yes. and then brought the student to school. We get those text messages. Yes. Asking, can you come pick me up for school? You know, Miss Jones or Mr. Jackson or Mr. Mugnoni, you guys mind coming to pick me up and whatever. We do that for our students. We actually have a set of engagement coaches and those engagement coaches are just that. Yes. They're responsible for engaging with the students. If a student is truant, we figure out what roadblocks can we take out of their way. Yes in order for them to be successful in school. So that's what we sit down and we grind. We're here probably till six o'clock every night trying to figure it out. Because like I said, no one has the magic wand, yes. but I'm gonna die trying. I'm gonna die trying. I don't have the magic wand, but I'm going to take the extra step. Mm -hmm. Ironically, this thing right here hits on that. Mm -hmm. And it mentions about the difference between being 111 degrees and 112 degrees. Mm -hmm. At a, 1100, I believe, I, 211 is the 211 starts two, the bowl, 211 correct 211 yes. starts the bowling point but 212, 212 you take that extra step well, you take that extra step so you guys definitely take the extra step here because none of my teachers that did that for me back when i was in high school mm -hmm. now eagle heights mrs kitchen would have did it for me mm -hmm. a few a few more of y'all i'm know i'm gonna forget names but she was my all-time favorite teacher but of course we gotta hurry up and get out of here mm -hmm. because you're a very busy woman but before we head up out if if anybody wanted to contact you about maybe partnering up with the Academy of Urban Scholars and maybe wanted to come do something nice for your students, how could they do that? Okay, you could come to Academy for Urban Scholars. We're located at um, 3405 Market Street here. Um, the number is 330-744-9070. You can ask for myself, Mrs. Jones. You can ask for Mr. Mugnoni, who is the head of the engagement coaches. Um, or you can reach us on our um, Facebook page. That is Academy for Urban Scholars High School Youngstown. Nothing else needs to be asked. Mrs. Jones, thank you so much okay. for taking this time out with me. Greatly right, appreciate thank you. you. Be sure to like and share this video. Chris Gunther with Mrs. Sabrina Jones of the Academy Urban Scholars. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time. I'm out.